realised I had the mic muted. So press a few extra buttons. But it's lovely to welcome you here this Sunday morning and those of you joining us uh, from around the country and in fact around the world sometimes. Uh, you're more than welcome here to join with us in our worship this morning. Our call to worship. is from Psalm 150 this morning. Words all know very well. And I'm reading actually today from the Good News version of the Bible, but you also have it on your screen. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his temple. Praise his strength in heaven. Praise him for the mighty things he has done. Praise his supreme greatness. Praise him with trumpets. Praise him with harps and lyres. Praise him with drums and dancing. Praise him with harps and flutes. Praise him with cymbals. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise the Lord, all living creatures. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to start off our Songs of Testimony um, service this morning with, uh, I think this one came up a few times on the, uh, on the surveys about your favourite songs. We're going to start off this morning with, oh what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. The band are going to support us this morning and uh, we're going to sing the three verses straight the way through. It's song number 307, if you're using a song book. <laughs> Thank you. 
that one, I'm not sure that that's what it's ended up being. Uh, but the scripture number one this morning is Psalm 145, verses 4 to 7. I'll read it from the screen. So one generation commends your work to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendour of your majesty. And I will meditate on your works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Amen. Um, one of the things that, um, that I was thinking about as I was um, sorting out songs and trying to find scriptures uh, to fit in with testimony, what does that mean? And that one really, really uh, resonated with me, as I'm sure I've already shared with you before, the testimony times when I was younger was really what I enjoyed listening to. It was the reality of the Christian life, coming from my mum and dad's friends, my, my family, and uh, to hear how God actually was working, not, not from years and years and centuries ago, but how he actually is still at work now, was what really kept me interested in the Christian faith as a young teenager. We only have one young teenager with us now, and he's not here this morning, uh, but, uh, but it is that, that testimony time that, that still encourages me. It still uh, boosts me, and I hope that it will do the same for each of us here today as we sing testimonies together, corporate testimonies, and share testimony together later in the service. We're going to sing another song. It's I Serve a Risen Saviour, number 843 in the songbook. The band are going to support us again. And uh, we will oh, and we'll all rise to sing again and then we'll have a bit of a uh, more of a sit down later on. But let's stand and sing. I Serve a Risen Saviour. <laughs> Thank you. 
within your heart today and you can look back, can't we? We can always look back and see where the Lord has integrated his work into our lives, sometimes without us even realising it, till we look back and see. We're going to have a message from the band and then afterwards we're going to sing a testimony uh, with the chorus. We're going to have a testimony time with the chorus. I'm living my life for Jesus. So if you have a word for us today, we're actually going to have another spot later. So if you've got more than one, great this morning. Uh, but uh, we're going to share testimony together after we've listened to the message from the band.
of life stories. And I, I can remember in my previous tour, a retired officer would stand up and you could know that a quarter of an hour later she would sit down. But she had a lot to say. And she spoke it in a very broad Yorkshire accent. And you listened to her. When I saw that the um, testimonies were this week, I thought, it's a long time since I gave my testimony. You can imagine my confusion, if you like, when I put up this morning when Joseph told me, London Derry Air. Could you maybe imagine that um, with my name, I hated that song. Oh, Danny Boy. <laughs> we lived in a house whereby there was a footpath running down the side. And one of the local inhabitants, who was a regular at the pub down the corner, every night at 10 15, straight after selling, uh, being turned out, Oh, Danny Boy, came up. Even our dog used to bark at it. But oh, many years ago, the band I was in, I was very privileged that we used to have famous composers come to do a practice once a month. And so was um, Ernest Brothers, Phil Cabernet, people like that who would come and talk about the music. One Tuesday night, a little man, a little, very small man, grey hair, came and he took the practice, he did his piece. Then he was asked the question, what is the perfect soul? We all sat waiting to hear it. And he came out with London Derry Air. He said, if you as a musician look at it, it is a perfect song. It goes up and down, the volume increases as you go up and it decreases as you come down. I hope the band managed to convey that to you this morning. But it made me think, for years I had hated that song. Then, it was introduced into our song. With all my soul, the spot of sin remains. I started changing my mind about that song. We can often look at things in different ways as we progress through life. From hating to loving. My testimony is this morning that I may be able to live my life as that song encourages us to do so. God bless you. Thank you. 
We'll sing along anyway, we know it, don't we? I'm living my life for Jesus. <laughs> Opportunities. That's a privilege, isn't it? 
He gives us opportunity to work for him. Let us continue to work. Let us continue I've still got to be the sort of person he wants me to be, even though they're going to be the way they are. And we judge, don't we? We shouldn't really. I still don't find it very easy to like everybody. But I've got to do that. Can I have a word, Kate? Of course, he can. He can usurp you. Yes. Never before have I got one before. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to the mic because I've got a bit of a funny throat this morning. Um, Kate's words have made me think um, about my, my Christian life. And we can sometimes really just go on in the same way. And sometimes we're, we're brought up. We have to think, perhaps from a verse from scripture, or from something that someone has said, and has made us really think about our faith more deeply. And thinking about testimony, it's, it's about our life, isn't it? 
And I want to say three things, and I won't take long, Kate. I'm a retired officer, but I tend to try and keep things short. But first of all, I was thinking that I'm a Christian by upbringing. Now, a lot of you know my story. It isn't very happy to begin with. But you know, tragedy comes in all our lives, one time or another, don't they? So up to the age of seven, things were a bit difficult for my family, and particularly for me, when our parents died. But I came to live at the age of seven, to live with a lovely lady who was a salvationist, and I came to call her man. I thought we were adopted, my sister and I, but I learned later we were actually, um... Foster. Foster, that's right. But you know, this lovely lady, Gran, Mrs. Ellison was her name, a lovely salvationist. She taught by example. A lovely lady, many times I think she was frustrated, particularly with me in my high spirits. But she taught by example, and when I started going to the Salvation Army with her, when we first went to stay with her, she put on this army uniform, which I have to say I, I giggled at because it's big bonnet, and you know, I looked at my sister Anne, and uh, she said, Now, I go to a church called the Salvation Army, and uh, this is our uniform, and I'd like you to come to Sunday school with me. So I was quite happy to go. My sister wasn't so pleased, but I went to the little call in the perimeter of Newcastle, and I really loved every minute of it. There were lots of other children, you know, the guides and me, scouts and cubs, and a little band when I was younger, which seemed to fizzle out. But I really came to love the people there. And I was taught by my example, and I became a Christian because the things that I saw in my grand's life, I was taught about properly in Sunday school. And uh, that did a great deal for me. And then secondly, I'm a Christian by conviction now, because I do believe that God is my Father, my Heavenly Father, and He loves me. And He showed His love in Jesus, His Saviour. And I know that Jesus died for me. And he forgave me of my sin and still does. Because we all make mistakes and we all sin. But I believe that Jesus is my Saviour. Because he rose again, then I too will rise with him. And thirdly, now that I am a mature Christian, I believe that I am also a Christian by calling. Because as a teenager, Together with the young people who have celebrated us in the call, we, we were real evangelists and we liked to go and do open airs on our own and really encouraged each other in the faith. And then at about the age of 16, age of 16 I was at a, a farewell for candidates for me to come in. And in that meeting, I felt a real urge, now I know by the Holy Spirit, to go forward and give my life as a full-time uh, officer. Now, with the kind of background I had and the uncertainties that life showed me at the beginning, okay. uh, I, I was a bit uncertain about that. I thought, well, you know, will, will the Lord want me? Will I be good enough? Will I be able to do this job adequately? But I've discovered since, because He has called me, He's also equipped me and helped me and still does. We're going to sing together and I think the band can help us this time. Uh, another song that popped up on the favourites lists, uh, twice I think, number 909, it's Count Your Blessings and we'll stand to sing that before we have a prayer time. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. 
And particularly in this heat at the moment, Lord, we just pray you will refresh them. That you will bring them strength. That their medications will do what their medications are meant to do. And that they will know wellness and coolness and rest this summer. Lord, we pray for countries that are at war. Things that are happening around the world that we can't possibly understand. As we stand so remotely, when our, our televisions and our media doesn't tell us the true extent of what's going on. But Lord, you are there. You know and you care. And so Lord, we pray for your world just now. For peace, for rest, for refreshment, and a new knowledge of your spirit to those who love you, so that they might overflow with your love and share that with others. And as we continue our time and our sharing of testimony this morning, Lord, I pray that you continue to bless us and encourage us through each other's words. Amen. Before we sing Christ is the Answer, another little chorus to sing with anybody else who might like to share testimony this morning, we're going to take up your tithes and offerings. Thank you. <coughs> Father God, we thank you that you call us to mission here in Brighton. And as we bring our financial offerings and tithes to you this morning, we pray that they will be used wisely to extend your kingdom here. Oh, <laughs> 
startling comments in the meeting this morning have caused me to ponder deeply. Muriel, you said you always like to keep things short. That has caused me considerable consternation. But still, there we are. We'll discuss that a bit. Now, here are, where's our dear kid? Oh, he's there. Yeah. Right, bless him. And now he's given me some inspiration. We've got trouble with the um, uh, uh, re recordings today. So, Keith mentioned West Side Story and the song, uh, There's a Place for Us. And he made a lovely spiritual reference to that. So I thought, why not? Put your music away. We'll sing another song from West Side Story. <laughs> we'll join him. Wally, I'll look to you for inspiration. I feel pretty, oh so pretty. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry, excuse me. They just need time to sort out what we have to do. Do your very best. If it doesn't work, just see what Okay, uh, just give us a second. Sorry. Uh, well,
We're going to skip a bit and I'm going to the scripture reading, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Thank you, Dad. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Therefore go and make disciples. And I'm not sure we can do that unless we share our testimony. Because it's all very well saying, oh, well, this, this says, but unless we've actually had that experience, unless we've actually understood what having the Holy Spirit in our lives has done for us, if we're not self-aware to realise that we're not perfect, that we still stumble and we make mistakes and we need to be forgiven, unless we share that with others, they're going to think we think we're perfect. And nobody can ever live up to that, can they? And anybody with a conscience will think, oh, no, I can't do that. But we, just like Jesus, completely human. We're not completely divine as well, though. And that's what sets us apart. We must share. If that's the command that we're given to go and make disciples, it's given to each and every one of us. And so sharing our testimony, sharing life, is something that's really very important. So Joe, is there any way that the band could support us for the next two? Because I don't think we could sing them in the band. Thank you so much. I realise your lips are going to be very sore. We're going to sing together in Christ alone, and then we're going to follow it by Christ in me. We'll, we will pause in the middle to support the band's lips. But two songs that really do tell testimony. In Christ alone, our hope is found. He is our light, our strength, and our song. He's our joy, isn't he? And the joy of the Lord is our strength. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. And as we have these um, two songs, it's our time to respond. It's time to think about what our testimony is, where we are today, what the Lord has done for us. And make these really our testimony today. We'll remain seated as we sing both of these songs. And, uh, and then we'll share a prayer and ascend again.
You are the presence that brings us through the light in our life. And as we go out sometimes into really difficult front lines, Lord, we pray that we will take our testimony, we will take our past and our present with us. And we pray that you will help and encourage us and strengthen us and embolden us to share our testimony with others. Help us, Lord, to see day by day on our front lines where we're having success, where sharing our lives with others has been a blessing. And sometimes, Lord, that just means sitting together, sharing life, sharing times together, sharing what we have. And so, Lord, as we look to leave this place today, we pray that you will send us out to go and make disciples. Lord, this is your command to us. And let our testimony, the things that we have seen you do in, through, and around us, be another tool in our discipleship toolbox of resources that we can use to help build the kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony shared today, the encouragement, the challenge, and the enthusiasm by which they've been shared. Lord, help us to seek one another's testimony, to keep us going in times of difficulty. Help us to remember them and use them too. We ask this in Jesus' name. We'll stand and we'll sing Christ in me. It's not, it's not the sending out song I've chosen, but uh, I'm aware of the time. I wasn't too sure about the timings today using a different structure of meeting. But we'll stand and we'll sing Christ in me, and then I'll pronounce the benediction uh, before we go through and share, share coffee and fellowship together. Thanks.
Jesus Christ is here. Till we meet. Till we meet. Till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet. Till we meet. God be with you. Till we meet again.